Hello and welcome to church. How are you doing today? Do comment below using your favorite emoji. So if it is a smiley, a love heart, kindly do let us know how you're doing with your favorite emoji. So this past week, we had an awesome time during the digital VBS. How cool is that? We got to have VBS on Line. So thank you so much parents for allowing your children to be part of this. Here are some of the awesome crafts that they got to send to us. Through your generous giving, we have been able to reach out to so many families who are in need in this season. So thank you so much for your giving. We really do thank the Lord for you. And also we thank the Lord for our different church plants because they are also being a blessing to people around their areas. Also, we have been able to donate masks in the different six church plants it's all thanks to your giving so we thank god for you and we thank you so much for your generous giving if you've not yet subscribed to our channel kindly do so so that you do not miss out on any awesome content that we have follow us on facebook instagram twitter and you will get to be part of the daily devotionals that happen every weekday at 6 p.m You'll also be part of the Children's Church, which you can get via our website. That is iccnairobi.org forward slash children. Did you know that CGs are meeting online? Well, if your CG has not yet met, you can discuss amongst each other and find a convenient way for everyone in the group to be part of the discussion. Service is about to begin, but before we do so, you can find the children's services using the link iccnairobi.org forward slash children. Karibuni sana, welcome to church, enjoy yourself, and let's get ready to worship the Lord together. Hello and welcome to our service here at International Christian Center, Nairobi. Thank you so much for inviting us into your spaces, wherever you're watching us from, be it your TV, your tablet, your phone. We are so glad that we can have church together with you today. You know, the Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. So won't you share the gladness and invite your family members. Go to that WhatsApp group, that Chama group. Send them the link. Let's have church together today. Yeah? And as you do that, Trish, yes. I want to know, what made you smile this week, this past week? Hmm, okay, what made me smile this past week is Sissy the Bunny. Sissy the Bunny? Yes. Who is Sissy the Bunny? Good question. So Sissy the Bunny was one of our main characters during our first ever digital vacational Bible school that happened this past week. Wow, we had the VBS online for the first time. That's so Trish, right. I have a question though. Mm -hmm. If someone missed VBS, Will they be able to access the material again? Yes. So if your child didn't take part in our VBS, they can still access all the content and materials through our website. That is iccnairobi.org forward slash children. Wow. And Steve, um, I want to know what made you laugh this week? <laughs> memes, Trish. Memes upon memes upon memes. I think those have been my highlight this time of the corona. I mean, they're just so funny. Social media is a buzz with memes. And we'll want to know what has been making you laugh, what has been making you smile this past week. Please drop us a comment on our comment section. We'll want to know. Share the cheer, share the joy. That's right. And you know, this past um, Sunday, we began a summon series entitled Defining Moments. And we had a lot of you, uh, of our viewers, interacting with us and getting to share some of your experiences about your defining moments. And we had this one lady um, just share about a time in her life when she lost her job unexpectedly and going through a phase of lamenting to God, crying out, but finally getting to a place of anchoring her faith in God and knowing that God is her sole provider. Wow. And for you, Steve, I don't know if you've had a defining moment in your life. I have, I've experienced a defining moment. Just recently, I became a father. Yay! Yeah, I mean, 
it's such an awesome experience. But I remember just the tension I had before he was born. I mean, the questions, the anxiety, the doubt, will I be enough, will he be safe? But you know what? I anchored myself in the word. I'll share with you a scripture that I think has, no, I know, it has been an anchor to me. They doing that the whole time. And I want to share with us today at home. If you could kindly open our Bibles to Psalm 91 from verse 9. The Bible says, If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the Most High your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample on the great lion and the serpent. But he, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will, he will call on me and I will answer him. He will be with, I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. What a wonderful promise, Trish, that with long life, he will satisfy us and show us his salvation. So, Lord, we thank you for your promises. We thank you that, Lord, indeed, you remind us in your word that you are walking with us. You are constantly with us. That, Lord, indeed, if we call you our shelter, our refuge, you will uphold us, you will preserve us, you will protect us. As we enter into this time of service, Lord, and lifting our voices in service with you, Lord, may you come and be with us, my Father. Your name is Emmanuel, God with us. We desire to be in abode with you, O God. Therefore, grace us with your presence. We honor you, we adore you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Pastor Steve, for that beautiful reminder from Psalms 91. Now we want to enter into a time of praising God and worshiping Him. But as we do that, if you would love to give of your tithes and offerings, you can do so using the details on the screen. But as for now, get some space in that. Invite your whole family and let's praise the Lord together. Enjoy the service. Jesus, there's no one like you, Lord. We adore you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We exalt your name, Lord. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We exalt your name, Lord. My heart. Belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah belongs to you. Let's sing it. You just. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. My hallelujah. My hallelujah belongs to you. My hallelujah to you, Lord. My hallelujah belongs. 
my hallelujah belongs to you oh yeah my hallelujah belongs to you my hallelujah belongs to you Indeed, all the glory and all the honor belongs to our God. And so now we want to lift up a praise to Him because there is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. There is no one like Yahweh. So wherever you are, just get some space.
to King David. You know, I love the words of that song. It's such a wonderful song. It says, we serve a God who does that which man cannot do. We serve a God who is good, a God who is faithful. And right now, whatever circumstance that you're facing, you know, all of us in this city, across the nation, across the world, really, we are in a space where we have to wait on God. And I just want to challenge you in this moment that you would put your faith and your hope in Him, that you would wait on Him. So let's just believe and pause for a moment and pray together. Lord Jesus, we worship you and we exalt you. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, you are the King of Kings and you are the Lord of Lords. And today we come and we rest in you. We rest in your goodness. We rest in your faithfulness. Lord, you're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our worship. We speak your covering upon your children, that Lord, you'd watch over them, that you would sustain them, that in this season, O oh God, you preserve your people, that Father, in this season, you'd establish them. We pray against the sickness, against disease. We pray for those who are sick. We speak your healing upon them. We pray for families that are going through a difficult time, that you would remember them in this season, that you would show yourself strong and faithful. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. You know, we are in a time when there is so much need around us. And in moments like this, it's so easy to want to hold back the resources that God has placed in our hands. But as a church, God has been challenging us to be generous and compassionate to the needs of those that are around us. I was reading in Exodus chapter 35 and from verse 20, and it talks about this time when the Israelites came and they gave towards the temple, the tabernacle and the services of the tabernacle. It says from the, the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses and everyone who was willing and whose heart was moved then came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting and also for all its service. And for the sacred garments, verse 22 says again, all who are willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold, jewelry of all kinds, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They presented their gold as a way of offering to the Lord. And I want to challenge you as we give of our tithes and our offerings, don't hold back, be generous, be compassionate. I believe that in this season, God is calling us to sow in the needs of those that are around us. So would you kindly give the details that are on the screen? Let's believe God and pray together. Lord Jesus, we worship you, we exalt you, I speak your blessing upon my brothers and sisters. I pray, O oh God, that you would preserve them in this season. You would preserve their loved ones. You would preserve their families. You would watch over them and sustain them. But I also pray, O oh God, you would establish them in your purposes in this time. Jehovah God, as they respond in obedience, as they respond willingly, may your hand of protection and covering be upon them. I pray for fruitfulness upon the work of their hands, that indeed you will reveal yourself to them, that you will guide them along this journey. We worship you and we exalt you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Lord, you are worthy of our praise, you are worthy of our worship. So we bow before you, we humble ourselves before you. May you be exalted, may your name be glorified in this season, O oh God. Show yourself strong and show yourself faithful. Our hope is in you, our trust is in you. You are our refuge, you are our strong tower. You say the righteous run to you and they are safe. Lord, in this moment we run to you, we hide in you, surround us with your presence, we worship you and we exalt you. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, we are so glad that you've made the time to be with us. And I believe that today God has a word for you. God has a word for, for all of us. 
You know, this last uh, weekend, we looked at the story of Job. And we say that the one lesson that each of us needs to take out of the life of Job, out of the life of this man who has an entire book in the Old Testament dedicated to him, if there's one thing that you and I can take out of his life is to have a faith that endures through all seasons. That when everything is stripped away, that you and I can focus our eyes on our God and that we can wait on him and trust him, especially in a season like this. So I want to continue along the same thought. And, to and, 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 and today we focus really on the life of Joseph. You know, Joseph is born in Jacob's family. And Joseph is Jacob's favorite child. And he grows up and he has these big dreams, you know, these dreams of leading his family, these dreams of having his family come and bow before him. And he shares the dream with the siblings, with the rest of the family. And the more he shares the dream, the more the brothers hate him. And they come up with this plan, and they plan to kill him. But later on, they sell him off as a slave to Egypt. And when you think about the story of Joseph, there are so many challenges that he goes through. And we're going to walk through those challenges in this time. But as we walk through them, what you see is you see a man who chooses to focus his eyes on God and maintain a godly attitude in spite of the challenges that he faces around him. You know, when you read in Genesis chapter 37, the brothers see Joseph coming and they immediately put together this plot of how to destroy his life. You know, in verse 19 of Genesis 37, it says, here comes that dreamer, they say to each other. Come now, let's kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal devoured him. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. When Reuben heard this, he tried to rescue him from their hands. Let's not take his life, he said. Don't shed any blood. Throw him into this cistern here in the wilderness, but don't lay a hand on him. Reuben said this to rescue him from them and take him back to his father. So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, the honest robe he was wearing, and they took him and threw him into the cistern. The cistern was empty and there was no water in it. As they sat down to eat their meal, they looked up and saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead. The camelites, the camels were loaded with spices, balm, and myrrh, and they were on their way to take that they were on their way to take to, to Egypt. Judah said to his brothers, "What will we gain if we kill our brother and cover up his blood? Come, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him. After all, he is our brother, our own flesh and blood." And the brothers agreed. You know, I often reflect about the condition that Joseph was in inside that pit. I can imagine him lying there in that pit and listening to his brothers discuss his fate. At such a young age, Joseph begins to battle with rejection. And they sell him off to the Ishmaelites. And eventually he ends up in Potiphar's house in Egypt. So by the time you get to Genesis chapter 39, Joseph is now living in Potiphar's house. In, verse, in chapter 39 and from verse 1, it says, Now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. Potiphar, an Egyptian, who was one of Pharaoh's officials, the captain of the guard, brought him from the, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him there. The Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered and he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord gave him success in everything that he did, Joseph found favor in his eyes and became his attendant. You know, imagine a young man who is carrying all this emotional baggage of rejection. And he goes into a foreign land and he's sold off as a slave. The word of God tells us that in Potiphar's house, Joseph has this amazing godly attitude. And it's so evident that God's hand is upon him. It's so evident that Potiphar is aware that God's blessing is upon his household because of having Joseph in that house. And the word of God tells us, you know, there was something about this man, Joseph, that he was a handsome man in verse 6. It says he was well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife takes notice of him and says to him, come to bed with me. Here is this young man serving in his master's house, trying to be faithful day by day, trying to be godly. But here is a woman who wants to take advantage of him. You know, when you look at the journey that Joseph is on, it would have been so easy for him to give up. It would have been for, so easy for him in that moment to give in to the demands of Potiphar's wife. But he doesn't, and eventually she tricks him. 
And when he doesn't give in, she has him, she complains to her master, Potiphar. And eventually, Joseph is sent to prison. You know, we are not guaranteed that when you do the right thing, we have an assurance of things working out. Sometimes when you do the right thing, we end up carrying the consequences of even that right thing. And here is a young man who eventually finds himself in prison. His life is getting from bad to us. He's sold off as a slave, becomes a slave in Potiphar's house, eventually finds himself in prison. But the word of God tells us that even there in the prison, in Genesis 39 and verse 21, while Joseph was there in the prison, the Lord was with him and he showed him kindness and granted him favor in the eyes of the prison warden. Joseph stays faithful even in difficult moments. Even there in the prison, he maintains his godly attitude and God's presence comes upon him and God guides him. His favor is upon him there in the prison. And something happens that changes, turns around the life of this young man, Joseph. There in the prison, there come two men, the cup bearer and the baker of Pharaoh. And when they come into the prison, Joseph is there and is assigned to serve them. And as he's serving them, each of them has a dream. And they come to Joseph and they share this dream that they've had. And Joseph then interprets the dreams for them and eventually turns out exactly the way that Joseph had interpreted the dreams. But what I find so interesting is that at the end of Genesis chapter 40, in verse 23, the chief cup bearer, though he's restored to his place before Pharaoh, he goes and forgets for two entire years. He forgets about Joseph. You know, so many of us are fighting for a seat at the table. But what I believe is that if you stay faithful, if you honor God, if you wait on God, God will lead you to a seat at the table that has your name on it. Because eventually God lifts up Joseph and Joseph becomes ruler over all of Egypt. You know, when you reflect on the journey that Joseph has been on, every single level there's a test, but that test God uses is to lift Joseph into the next level. There in the pit, as the brothers are discussing his fate, it should have been so easy for Joseph to become so bitter. But when he leaves and he's sold off as a slave to Egypt, he goes into Potiphar's house and he lets go of his pain, of his bitterness. He lets go of the emotional baggage that you'd have carried into Potiphar's house. You know, I know so many people, some of them even elderly women, elderly men, men with families, with grandchildren, but they are still fighting something that somebody told them 50 years ago, somebody told them 30 years ago. You know, so many of us, as we grow through life, we carry the baggage of our past with us. And you get to a place of, yes, you have your own family. You've grown in your own right, but you're still trying to prove a point to someone who at times has even died. Just because your father told you that you'd not amount to much. Just because your mother said that you would make a good wife. Just because somebody spoke some words of failure into your life, you end up living your life stuck in that moment, trying to prove that person right or wrong. So many times as we reflect on our journey, there are things that happen in our past. You know, all of us come from families, and maybe your family was like Joseph's family. It was a dysfunctional family. You think about the things that happen in that family. It's a dysfunctional family. The father has a favorite child, and Joseph ends up bearing the brunt of something that is not his doing. Each one of us, if we reflect on our own families, if we reflect on the journey that we have walked, there are battles that we fight. And the challenge that you and I face is that unless we let go of the things that seek to hold us back to our past, they can become a hindrance to us walking into the future that God has for us. You see, if Joseph could speak to you, if you could take a lesson out of Joseph's life, it would be watch your attitude, watch your heart. Watch your attitude, watch your heart, especially in the difficult and low moments of life. You see, crisis doesn't change us. It only reveals who we truly are. Difficult moments don't change us. They only reveal who we are on the inside. You see, during moments of conflict, what is on the inside is what actually comes out. John Maxwell writes and says that your attitude is the paintbrush of the mind. Your attitude is the paintbrush of your mind. You see, our attitudes, our mentality and our mindset will affect who we end up becoming. I love what Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 to 11 says. It says, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Jesus Christ. What mindset is this that Jesus Christ had? 
It says, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God our Father. It talks about the attitude that Jesus had, that he did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but he, to be grasped, but he humbled himself and allowed himself to come and live among us as man. Died on the cross that you and I will be restored to relationship with our God. And I believe that in so many instances, healing begins with that desire, that choice to humble ourselves, to forgive and to let go of that which has happened in our past. You know, right now we are in a place where our families are together. And there are so many issues that are coming up. Some of the things that we've, we've ignored over time, some of the things that we've battled with. And now we're in a place where we are together with our spouse, with our kids, and we have no option but to confront those challenges. And there is so much tension and conflict. But so many times the things that we fight in others are things that we have in our own lives. So many times our attitude towards others comes out of our own journey that we have walked. You know, when I think about the children of Israel, you can imagine God bringing the children of Israel out of Egypt through his mighty hand, through the amazing works, that he, the miracles that he performed. And do you know it took 40 years for them to actually change their mindset. For 40 years, God leads them on a journey that actually would have taken them 40 days. But he takes them on this journey for 40 years because he says in his word, he says that he, know, he knew in Exodus chapter 13, he says, God knew that if he left them by the shorter route, they would experience warfare and they would give up and go back. You see, our attitude can become our greatest hindrance. You know, these men walked in the desert for 40 years. God fed them every day. Their clothes did not wear out. Their shoes did not wear out. But they still doubted God's goodness and his faithfulness. You see, you can have a posture of heart where you still doubt the goodness of God, where you still doubt the faithfulness of God. You can have a posture of heart where as you look at the things that are around you, your heart is filled with fear. And you have to choose. For you to change, you have to choose, number one, to change your attitude. You have to choose how you treat those that are around you. Number two, you have to choose to change your perception of who you are, your own identity. You have to embrace a godly identity of who you are. And number three, you have to choose to change the perception of why you exist. Understanding that you have a purpose. God has a purpose for you to change your identity, to change your perception of who you are, to change your attitude. Most of our anger and our frustration comes from the gap between our reality and our expectation. You know, right now, families are together, spouses are together with their children. And in moments like this, so many things that we've ignored in the past that we've not dealt with come to the forefront that we have to deal with them and confront them. And in a moment like this, it's so easy for you to be in conflict with those that are around you. But so many times the conflict that we have with those that are around us is a reflection of our own internal conflict. You know, when you think about the journey that Joseph walked, Joseph was betrayed by his own brothers. He was deserted by his own family. Joseph is exposed to sexual temptation. He faces punishment for doing the right thing. He's in prison for a long time. And on top of that, he's forgotten by those that he has helped. You see, Joseph's response in every setting is not, why am I going through this? His response is, what, what can I do to respond to what is happening to me? You see, everyone that comes into contact with Joseph becomes aware that wherever Joseph goes, God's hand is upon him. They become aware that wherever Joseph goes, he's faithful and he remains true to his faith in God. You know, how do you and I respond to the challenges that are around us? How do we respond to this moment that we find ourselves in right now? I believe, number one, you and I are called to value the time that we have, to value this season and to ask ourselves, how can I add value? To myself. Number two, you and I are called not to walk in isolation, but to reach out to those that are around us. How can you reach out to those that are around you? How can you be a blessing? You know, in prison, Joseph is not isolated, but he reaches out and he responds to the need of the cupbearer and the baker. 
He is open to reach out to those that are around him. Would you guard your heart in this season? Guard your heart against fear. Guard your heart against anxiety. Guard your heart against the schemes of the devourer. He who would like to even get into a place where you get depressed by what is happening around you. Would you guard your heart? Immerse yourself in God. Spend time in his word. Spend time in his presence. Spend time in prayer. Have a daily routine where you have time that you daily connect with God in his presence. I would also say that you and I need to ask ourselves, why are we angry? Why are we responding to the things that are happening around us in the way that we are? Confront your, con confront your frustration. Ask yourself, what is it that is making me frustrated in this moment? And then find a place or someone that you can talk to, that you can reach out and share the burdens that you're carrying in your own heart. Let go of the past. Ask for forgiveness. Seek reconciliation. I believe that this is a season for us to let go of the things that we have carried for years that in this moment today, that you can choose to turn a new leaf. You can choose to let go of the weight of the past. Are there some things that you need to forgive? Are there some things that you need to let go of? Are there some things that you've carried in your heart that this, mo this, this, this moment as we pray, that you can say, Lord, I'm going to let go of this particular aspect or area of my life. Confront your frustration. Let go of your past. But then I also want to challenge you into a space that I get uncomfortable in. And that is a space of getting feedback from those that are around you. You know, when I think about what happened in Potiphar's house, when Potiphar's wife accused Joseph, you know, the story goes that when the women went to talk to Potiphar's wife and they examined Joseph's coat, they discovered that the coat actually was taken from Joseph as he was running away and not coming towards this woman. And I asked myself, what if Potiphar had taken some time to get some feedback from the rest of the workers in his house? What if in that moment he had paused and processed that moment differently? You know, I get anxious sometimes when I'm asking for feedback. And I want to challenge you this week, get some feedback from your spouse. Get some feedback from your children. You know, ask them, what are some things that I can do differently? What are some areas that as a father, as a mother, what are some things that as a son, as a daughter, what are some areas that I can do differently? What are some things that you see in me that I'm not making the most of? Get some feedback and I'm sure that it's going to be a blessing to you. I also want to challenge you, what are some of the battles that you're fighting on the inside? What are some of those things that you're doing on the outside that are a reflection of an inner battle? Are you fighting a lot with your spouse? Are you fighting a lot with your kids? Could it be a reflection of an inner battle that could be going on inside you? Why don't you spend some time and take a step back and begin to ask yourself, how can you process differently through the things that are happening around you? You see, the faults that we see in others at the faults that are in us. We see others as we are. When we feel like we want to fix others, most of the times we are the ones who need fixing. When we feel like we want to fix others, in most instances, you and I are the ones that actually need fixing. When you see all these things in your spouse that you need to fix, in most instances, you are the, ones that have, you are the one that has issues that you need to fix. Are there some things in your own life, in your own attitude that you need to confront and deal with? You know, I believe that the ultimate test of Joseph is actually after his father has died and the brothers come to him in Genesis 50, from verse 15 to 21. It says, when the brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what we are to say to you. Ask I, we are, I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their messenger came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers ca then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. Am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. You see, in that moment was Joseph's ultimate test. In that moment, when Joseph had access to power and authority, was a test of his attitude and his character. And Joseph chooses to forgive the brothers, to release of that which has happened in the past, and he chooses to be a blessing to them. You see, people that have a great attitude forgive and let go easily. They have a teachable spirit. They take responsibility for their attitude. They travel the high road. You know, there are three kinds of roads. There's the low road. The ro low road says, treat people worse than they treat you. 
The medium road says, treat people the same way they treat you. The high road says, treat people better than they treat you. You see, Joseph decided he was going to take the high road. He chose to forgive and to let go. He chose to have this teachable spirit. He chose to take responsibility for his own attitude. And Joseph also understood his own value. You know, when you look at this young man, through his suffering, no matter how unfair it was, he develops this strong character and this deep wisdom. He had a posture, a way in which he responded to the difficulties and the challenges that came his way. And I believe that there's some of us that God is saying to us, would you let go of the issues of your past? Would you let go of the hurt and the bitterness and the pain, the things you have carried with you? Maybe you are even all alone by yourself and in this season you're feeling so alone. But would you let go of the issues of your past? Would you surrender to God and open up your hands to receive a future that God has for you? Would you open up your hands and release and let go of the battles? Maybe it's even your own identity that all through your life you've had to fight through obstacles and challenges that other people have placed in your way. And you have ended up seeing yourself in a way that is so much far, farther from what or who God has called you to be. You've developed this picture of who you are that is not the picture that God has of who you are. Would you open up yourself today and say, Lord, I surrender myself to you. And I desire a new start. I desire a new beginning. I believe that in this crisis, in this moment of COVID-19, that you can find and make a new beginning. And I want to challenge you that you would make a new beginning. You know, we're going to pray. Maybe for you, you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord over your life. Would you surrender your life to him? And say, Lord, here I am. I surrender my life to you. Would you pray this prayer with me? Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness, and thank you for your faithfulness. I surrender my life to you. I give of my mind, of my body. I confess that I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness. I choose you as Lord. I submit to you. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, if you pray that prayer, let us know. Reach out to us, and let us know so that we can stand with you and pray with you. There's also a second group of people. You know, for you, you have so much pain. You have so much bitterness and so much anger. Maybe this season has only served to bring to the fore some of the things that you thought you had buried. Would you surrender to him? God has a great future for you. You know, for me, in my time of prayer, Isaiah chapter 3 and verse 10, the word of God says, Say to the righteous, it will be well with them, that they will eat the fruit of their deeds. And I want to speak those words over you, that it shall be well with you, that you will eat the fruit of your deeds. Would you surrender your pain, your bitterness, that which you've held on? Would you release it today? Lord Jesus, we open up our hands to you. Lord, I speak your covering upon my brother, upon my sister in this moment. As they open up their hands to you, Lord, would you take away the pain? Take away the bitterness of the past. Take away the disappointment. Take away that which is not of you. Show yourself strong. Show yourself faithful. Minister healing upon your people. Minister, of oh God, in this moment, a new beginning, that they would see you for who you are, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. I speak a bathing of new dreams and a bathing of new visions, that your light would shine through this darkness. We worship you and we exalt you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. Lord bless you. And keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. The Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the lord turn his face toward you and give you peace so we say
thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations you are, and your family over and your, your family. children and their children may and their children presence. may his presence come before you and beside you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your calling and your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 for joining us remember you can find this service on our social media platforms that is youtube and facebook and you can share it with your networks with your family and friends so that they can also get to partake of the blessing and also if you are not able to give in the cost of the service of your tithes and offerings you can do that via the details on the screen we would love to stand with you in prayer so if you have any prayer requests or if you pray to give your life to Christ or would love to do so, kindly send us a message using the number on the screen. As we move on into another week, I don't know what kind of attitude you'll choose to walk in, but as for me, my attitude that I choose to go into a new week with is the attitude of treating people better than they treat me. God bless you and have an amazing week ahead.
wasn't that amazing thank you so so much for joining us we love you guys so so much if you need someone to stand with you in prayer you can reach us via the numbers on the screen please do not hesitate to reach out to us you are not alone we are here for you as ICC Nairobi, we are part of the Unite 714 movement. This means that we will be praying at 714 a.m. and 714 p.m. in conjunction with the Global Church. If you can record yourself praying at either 714 a.m. or 714 p.m., kindly do send us that video via the numbers on the screen. Thank you so, so much for joining us. See you tomorrow at the Daily Devotionals at 6 p.m. We love you. Have a fantastic week ahead. Bye.